pick up any newspaper or look at any financial news website at the moment and you'll rapidly come across the expression share buyback. Lots of firms are doing them, volumes are increasing, so what are they all about? And are they in fact such a great idea for investors? I'm going to argue, maybe not in all cases. So why do companies spend cash buying back their own shares from shareholders? Well, the official line tends to be, we don't see any better investment than the one we make in ourselves. In other words, the company's official party line is, we are using your money to buy back our shares, return the cash to you, because let's face it, who wouldn't want to invest in us? Even we invest in us. Well, that's lovely. That's the marketing spin. But be careful. Look under the bonnet. Just make sure that the reasons why share buybacks are happening are in fact as rosy as management would have you believe, and that actually they're not attempting a little bit of sneaky financial engineering behind the scenes. Okay, so what are the choices if a firm has surplus cash, too much cash, if you like, more cash than it needs? Well, a buyback is just one of them. Number one, keep it. The problem with companies sitting on a lot of cash is that's not what you pay them to do as a shareholder. You do not buy shares in Tesco so they can sit on cash. You do not buy shares in Nike so it can sit on cash. If you want somebody to sit on cash, it's called a bank or a building society or a national savings product, you put your cash in there. You don't need companies to do it for you. So, some companies think, ooh, better do something with our surplus cash. Quite right, they should. Problem is, some of them might go out and spend it. Now, that's good, you want companies to expand, use their cash to get bigger, to grow, to buy the firms, but you don't want them doing it on a whim. Expansion at any price is not the aim. Okay, so if a company can't think of anything to invest in, it's got to do something with the cash. So why not give it back to the very people who gave it to the company in the first place? It's shareholders. Well, one option is pay a special dividend, pay a bigger dividend. I like that route. Dividends, as I addressed in another video, impose discipline on management, force them to focus on cash flow. Dividends are good, and stocks that pay a reasonable dividend yield pay you the income that you need to go about your day-to-day -day life. But a lot of firms will ignore that one too and go for the buyback option. They'll say, no, 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 what we're gonna do is actually buy back shares that previously we sold to investors. So that's the route I want to look at. But don't forget, a company has other choices. And this one in particular, I don't see much wrong with. All right, let's just bear that in mind as we go through. Right, buybacks, let's focus right on those. Now, why do firms do buybacks? Good reasons, all right? So when is it good reasons from your point of view, an investor? So when does it make sense? You're thinking, hmm, they're gonna try and buy back some shares. Is that a good thing, is that a bad thing? Number one, the share price has been unduly punished, so buying cheap shares makes sense. Uh, no lesser figure than uh, Fundsmith's Terry Smith has said that if a company can buy back its shares in the open market for below what's called the book value, that could be good news. That's a good use of the company's cash. That's buying shares at a good, cheap price. You know, that's a good use of the money the company's got. But, not so good reasons, okay? Because this is the kind of altruistic, of course this is why we're doing it, investing in ourselves, buying back shares, giving value to our other shareholders by buying back some shares when they're cheap. Not so good reasons, boosting ratios. I'll show you how that works briefly in a moment. You don't need to be an expert on numbers to see how that can work. Maintain the value of stock options. There's a little sneaky one. So remember, a lot of directors are paid in stock. And if you think about it, if the company buys back shares in the open market, that's gonna decrease the number of shares trading in the open market. If you decrease the number of shares in the market, the price will probably lift. And if you're a director who's paid in shares, happy days. So watch that one. Of course, they won't tell you that's why they're doing it. And to put off predators. If a company reduces the number of shares that are available in the open market, it might make it more difficult for predators to get in because it might take out some of the shareholders who might have sold their shares to a predator. Now, in a free market, that's not a great motivation either. So just keep an eye out for those on the right. Companies won't declare that's what they're doing, but you need to be thinking, is that what they're doing? Right, now here's another little sneaky thing about share buybacks. Um, are you even invited to sell your shares to the company if it wants to buy them back? The answer is probably not as a retail investor because whilst the company could make a tender off at all shares, so we're planning to buy back some shares, any of you can chuck your shares into the ring and have them bought back. In reality, a lot of companies just buy them selectively in the open market. 
maybe from certain types of investor. So the process isn't always quite as open as perhaps it could be. And the shares can be bought back using cash or debt. And there's another thing in a moment I'll suggest you want to keep an eye out for is companies raising debt, increasing their balance sheet gearing, as it's called, taking on more risk in effect, increasing their bankruptcy risk simply to pay for a share buyback. All right, so just watch out for that one too. Now, the impact. Okay, so here we get into sort of flattering the numbers, the not so good reason for a share buyback. What's the effect if a company spends cash buying back shares on assets? Bang. All right, its overall assets will drop because it's going to spend millions potentially of its cash, the cash it's got spare on buying back shares. But here's the thing, what's the impact on earnings? All right, absolutely nothing. If I can put it this way, what's the impact of you taking some cash to pay down your mortgage on your salary? Zero. All right, you reduce the cash in your bank but your salary stays the same. Think about that from a company's point of view. The effect on earnings of buying back shares is nothing. And that is useful. Lower assets, no effect on earnings. So, great way to improve return on assets. Great way to improve earnings per share. A fairly key number tracked by shareholders. Why? Because think about it. If, you're, if your assets, for example, are 100 million and your earnings are 10 million, all right, at the moment, 10 million as a, as a proportion of 100 million is return on assets of, say, 10%. If your earnings don't change and you do a share buyback, but that takes out some of your cash pile, all right, so um, maybe that drops to more like 80 million, making up the numbers. Fantastic. 10 million is a bigger proportion of 80 million. Bang. Increased return on assets. It's like magic. All right. Your earnings haven't changed, but you've shrunk the asset base. Fantastic. Earnings per share, same sort of idea. Imagine a company's got earnings of, say, 10 million, number of shares in issue, I'm abbreviating here, 100 million, earnings per share, so let's put that into sterling, all right, just 10p. Buyback shares, doesn't affect earnings, take out a load of those, knock that down to say 80 million, the numbers matter less than the principal, earnings don't change, smaller number of shares, bang. Up goes earnings per share, it's like magic. Okay, that's sometimes why companies do it. Now, therefore, watch out for three things to finish this presentation. Firms buying expensive shares is now a good time to be buying back shares. A lot of companies are doing it, I would say in a lot of cases, maybe not, because they're buying their own shares when their shares are expensive. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Especially if you then issue more shares to raise capital when the market drops, if the market drops, all right? So watch out for that. Poor underlying earnings growth. Is the company trying to mask the fact it's not really making any money, it's running out of ideas, it hasn't got anything to do with its cash by doing share buybacks to boost earnings per share short term? And thirdly, watch out for firms raising debt to pay for the shares they're buying back, because that introduces extra volatility into the balance sheet. So in other words, the short-term gain from a buyback can be made up for by long-term pain in the form of higher debt. So there you have it, share buybacks. Popular, but not always good news.